Mainline Murders, Crime Scene. Take one, and three, two, one, E. Barry Bow here, America's Best Crime Writer. We're here in our Sunshine Room studios in beautiful suburban folk crawl. Windows open, breezes blowing. Now today, we'll begin to assess the crime scene. Shortly after 5 a.m. on June 25th, 1979, Police dispatchers in Harrisburg received a 911 call from an anonymous male. I just found a woman in the back of a vehicle, in the trunk. She's sick. Cops arrived just after 5.30 to discover a female's body thrown into the trunk of an abandoned hatchback. But the woman wasn't sick. She was dead. She was also nude, and she'd been beaten. Two black eyes bumps and bruises all over her body, duct tape around her mouth, chains wrapped around her body. Inside the car, officers found an umbrella, a matchbook cover from a motel in Gettysburg, fast food wrappers, an empty Coca-Cola bottle, part of a blanket, a towel, and a blue comb which bore the inscription 79th Army Reserve Command from Norristown, PA. Under the driver's seat, they found a rubber dildo, but they did not find any clothing, no ID, no purse, jewelry, watch, or eyeglasses. The gas tank was half full. It was obviously a homicide, but evidence techs failed to find any trace evidence to provide the slightest clue about who killed her. Later that day, the Dauphin County coroner performed the autopsy. By the way, he was not a forensic pathologist. He was an internist. To him, it looked like she'd been strangled or suffocated. And he estimated the time of death as between midnight and 6 a.m. on the day before, Sunday, June 24th. Now, I have to mention this. Months later, Tests would be taken before they cremated Susan's body. She'd been injected with enough morphine to kill her ten times over. That was her cause of death. Now, back to the crime scene. Investigators got a tentative ID by running her license tags. Then they contacted Susan Reiner's brother, who traveled to Harrisburg, and made a positive ID. The Pennsylvania State Police took charge of the investigation. One of the lead investigators was Trooper Jack Holtz. He was a 23-year veteran, and he earned $35,000 per year with the state police. For the next several weeks, investigators tried to put the pieces together, but they got nowhere. They even failed to identify a suspect. So, the investigation ran out of steam, was placed on the back burner. In the next episode, we'll learn about the first break in the case. If you like true crime, give Born to Be Wild a look. A classic true crime about outlaw bikers, available on Amazon and elsewhere. So, that's it for today. Thanks for stopping in. Until next time. See you. And that's a wrap.